Well, in the previous video, we watched Gininda tell us about 375 and how him and a team of other policemen went down to the KZN. They went to the Mayua's house. When they got to the Mayua's house, as you know, in true form, the Mayua's always tell them, about Dumelo's statement and to their son-in-law or their brother-in-law, depending who you're talking to in the family, that uh, Dumelo said that Senzo was shot by accident by Zandi's boyfriend. They have sung that song from day one and um, there's allegations of a missing statement according to Brigadier Kininda. Listen, the next couple of clips, you're going to watch Brigadier Kininda talk endlessly. Yes, I said it. First of all, I thought when he writes his statement, the punctuations are not there. No. In these clips, he's not answering Advocate Rams's question. He's answering the question that he has in his mind. And he goes on and on and on. Like, let me tell you something. He explains and explains and explains and gives so much detail. It is absolutely shocking at the precision in remembering things from 2016, 2018 to 2019. And then he tells us, because now we know why there's this statement. This statement is not there because he went to the Durban with uh, the others. Okay. No, the statement is not there for that. The statement is there specifically because according to him in the media, they were saying that Mr. Lopez statement is missing. And that's when him and the DPP decided he should write the statement. And that is why it is dated for, um, November 2019. Isn't that a miracle? So when he initially went, there was no statement from him and there was no need for a statement from him, according to him, because he did not sit down and take Lopez's statement. Lopez's statement was taken by the late Brigadier Modise, okay? Not him, okay? No, no, sorry. The late Captain Mabuti. You see, most people are late in this Nganegwane, okay? Most people are late. You know what I would like? To know the ne the causes of death. How many, not even by name, okay? It just give us a tally. How many died of um, suspicious causes of death? How many died of natural causes of death? I just want to see something. I just want to see something because, wow. So, uh, Captain Maputi is not here to tell us these events the way that Brigadier Geninda is accounting them, conveniently so. But you know what? Asikolapo, it's not a big deal. It is not a train smash. But it's the fact that his investigation tactics involve writing statements in response to media allegations. Why not wait for the why not wait for the, the docket to go to court and address everything in court? I, I thought that's how it works. I don't know. I, I might be a YouTube expert, but I'm not a legal expert. I thought that all issues are addressed inside the courtroom. As we can see, after he heard about Dr. Mbazane and Dr. Modise, what did he do? He ran around looking for them. He went all over Joburg looking for them. I'm going to let you watch. <laughs> I feel like I have to apologize, but we have to bear with it and watch the next couple of clips and listen to Brigitte Kininda. And let me know in the comment section some of the items that stand out to you. For me, I've highlighted what stood out to me. It's, it's, it's his endless explanations long winding explanations i don't know maybe it's because i'm a simple person i like to ask questions and people just give me the answer poor ramosipi he's so patient he lets him go on and on and on and then finally he gets to the part of okay so 
what happened to Ubutelezi and uh, Warrant Officer Makubo? Did they kind of like quit? Did they like, did you fire them? Did you take them off the cold case unit? What happened? Or are they still investigating it to this day? Like, what's their position? And he says, no, I'm the lead investigator. Like, that is one thing he emphasizes over and over and over and over again. Like, this man loves his title, okay? Do not take the lead investigator title away from this man because what is he going to do with himself? And he says, well, they just stopped reporting to me. I don't know what they were doing, but there was a lot of trust issues amongst us and they just kind of fell off along the way. So I don't know what they're doing. I, I don't know. They wouldn't hand in their 375, although I've read it now, but then they would not give it. Okay. They, they would not, they, they were not interested. So yeah, pretty interesting couple of minutes. Let's go ahead and listen to it together. And you know what? I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. <laughs> Thanks for watching. You state that at the time you were not part of the investigation of Foslo Ras 636, 10 of 2014. Who was the investigating officer at the time? Uh, Brigadier Mudise, the late Brigadier Mudise Malot. He was from Gauteng. And the gist of your A128 is that Mr. Tlope then made a statement which was obtained by Captain Mabuti. Is that correct? That is correct, Malot. But furthermore, Malot, that the said statement made uh, or taken from Mr. Tlope is in the docket because 128 was in relation to the allegation or the assertion that the statement that was given by Mr. Thorpe in my presence, although it was said it was taken by me, is missing. So the gist of 128 was to say, was to correct the allegation to say the statement was taken in my presence by Captain Mabuti and the statement is not missing, it's still available. Uh, yeah, but okay. Okay. And where were those allegations that the statement has now gone missing from the docket? Where did the, those allegations emanate from? Well, my lord, it, it came up when we, so you'll, you'll see the date, my lord, um, <clears throat> it's 2019 when it was commissioned. So one will see that in 2016, I didn't make a statement myself because there was no need, there was no allegation. I was basically present when the statement is taken from Mr. Thorpe. Fast tracking to 2018, I then get appointed as the lead investigating officer. We then, while we are running with this investigation, then this allegation, they were, they were in the media platform a lot. In our discussion with the NPA, because I did say that there was a prosecutorial arrangement between us and the NPA, this assertion then needed to be addressed, and that is how this statement was made. Not that someone confronted me, it was something that the DPP felt that, look, there is this issue, let's just address it, and that's, that's how I made the statement. Uh, furthermore, my lord, so, sorry, 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 furthermore, when, and I testify about this, my lord, when docket 375 was eventually then disclosed, when I said, uh, I think I covered that in evidence in chief, um, with regard to docket 375 of 1, 2019, and we had to make the copies for the defense, I saw also a statement there um, by one of the investigators making the same assertion, you know, insinuating that the statement taken by Mr. Thorpe is missing is something to that effect and, and so so that and, and that basically corrects that 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 cannot be true now Colonel, i mean sorry brigadier if you know prior to uh mudise I, I don't know her title that you mentioned that she was the investigating officer of this case prior to her do you know if the case was investigated by another investigative team y yes so so the, my, my understanding, and that is now in relation of what the quotate contains, my lord, the, the first investigating officer that was leading was in 2014. So first it was the DPCI. Um, that is why one will see that when the cell phones were taken from the people who were inside the house, the person who took control of those cell phones as an investigating officer is one Lieutenant Kenneth Nittling. He is from the DPCI. That's the Hawks. Secondly, the downloadings of the cell phones were done by Captain Mushwana. He is from the Hawks. The application for Section 205 for everyone that was in the house, my lord, were done by Captain Bomsrang. He is also from DPCI, the Hawks. Captain Bomsrang. Bomsrang. He's a Lieutenant Colonel now, Lieutenant Colonel Bomsrang. Now, in a few days from there, my lord, then the detectives, provincial detectives, then took over, and then female Captain Mutetwa was then the I.O. of this matter. That's female Kenyan Mutetwa. 
So Captain Mutaito Malot was also working in the same office or provincial office where uh, Brigadier Mudise was. He was a candidate at the time, and there was also Brigadier Nzov. So it was the same office, and I'm not just not sure at what stage who was playing at what, what role at the time, but I know Captain Mutaito was, was the lead IO. At the time, when I was tasked by the DIVCOM, I know it specifically is Brigadier Mudise because when we got to Mr. Matala, um, to follow this assertion by Mr. Thorpe that he told him what is contained in that statement. I was referred to, Kenel, to Brigadier Mutise to say, we don't know you, this is the IO, and I had to ask him to say, look, we have the request from the DIVCOM, can you allow this person to respond? And I've indicated, my lord, that there was resistance. So that is how I know um, the, the presence of Brigadier Mutise. Lastly, my lord, I further know that there was a time when the provincial detectives were working hand in glove with the PCI. Um, and, and I saw that in the docket. All this I'm referring to the docket, my lord, because there was a time where Major General Mukotedi um, was participating, I don't know whether it was a reconstruction or some form of activities with the provincial detectives. Um, so, so there was also that joint uh, type of uh, an investigation team. Now, your further testimony is that your team uh, where now you assist with the matter. The, this occurred on the 12th of November, 2018. Is that correct? That's correct, my lord. That's when I signed for the docket after being appointed by um, the previous na the national, yes, the previous national commission, General Stolle. And that the officers that were tasked with you were three more. That is Ramohala, Kenel Butelezi, Warrant Officer Makubo, and yourself so there were four of you that's correct it, it was four of us that's correct my lord in a sense that that was the specific members but yes. the cold case unit which was under my, com my my control my lord was tasked in other words handling this matter kenlan ramohala was part of the cold case unit yes. it is these two members who were seconded to the unit to assist specifically in this investigation but the unit itself, which didn't have many members, I think we were, it was myself, Kenan Ramohala, um, Sergeant Mohane, Sergeant Mohola, I think we were four or five, my lord. So, so we were tasked to lead that. So all the resources um, or equipment that we needed were coming from that. But seconds to that, it was then these two members who were then um, said must work specifically with the case of Senzo Mayewa, my lord. To put it into correct context, my lord, the, the communication during that appointment, referred to the four of us, meaning myself, Kenel Ramohala, uh, Waranto Samakubo, and Lieutenant Kenel Butelezi. And as you now state, as you had previously stated, Warrant Officer Makubo is seconded from DPCI, and Kenel Butelezi is uh, seconded from the psychology unit uh, of the SAPS based in Pretoria. Is that correct? That is correct, my lord. And thereafter, as one of the leading investigators, you then make a conscious decision that all four leading members, I'm not speaking about Mohani Mohola and the others, yourself, Butelezi, Warrant Officer Makubo, and Captain Ramohala must be availed with copies of 63610 for uh, bouncing off idea purposes regarding the direction of the case, correct? That, that is partly correct, my lord. It's correct in the sense of the last part which talks to bouncing off the ideas insofar as what the docket tells us making the copies. That is correct. But the first assertion that the four of us were leading investigating officers is incorrect. The mandate was very clear and the ranking structure was also very clear. I was the most senior person at that time. I was a full colonel. There was no full colonel in that structure. I was the most senior person and I was appointed as such as the lead investigating officers. These other three members were part of the investigation team in terms of the listing, but not as lead investigating officers, my lord. Okay, I accept that correction that you were the main lead investigator. And your testimony further is that during the course of uh, discussions amongst the investigative team, it became quite clear that there were differences of opinion between, on the one hand, yourself, Ramohala, agreeing, and on the other hand, uh, Warrant Officer Makubo and Kenel Butelezi disagreeing. Is that correct? Yes, it became very clear, my lord. 
and the differences of opinion according to your testimony were regarding the theory of the case, namely the theory whether or not there were intruders in the house, if there were intruders or if there were no intruders. You and Ramohala believing that there were intruders and warrant officer Butelezi, uh, I mean Makubo, and Colonel Butelezi uh, disagreeing, saying there were no intruders. Is that correct? It, it is correct, my lord, but it later became clear when, like I said, when I read 375, the docket 375, that there was also, as I said, a statement that seems to, what seems, it says that the statement given to Mr. Thorpe or taken by me is actually uh, not in the docket. And the assertion that was given, and which I think that's where these allegations were coming from, it was to an extent that it was creating an impression that Mr. Thorpe gave a statement that would have been a breakthrough in this matter. And that statement somehow was not filed in the docket by me. And that assertion, and I think that at that time, obviously I was not aware of what is contained at docket, it was not even open, but subsequently it was open and I saw that. So I don't know where it's coming from a lot, but it was there. But it also created the wage because there was this suspicion where I was not confronted to say, but Colonel, there's a belief that you took a statement. Where's the statement? So, so there was that. I'm saying in addition to it, my lord, it was in the background, but later then I came to know that this is, this is there. But yes, there were difference of opinion, and those opinions, those difference of opinion were in existence right up to the 29th when we had that meeting at the DPP's office, the 29th of January 2019, with the team, meaning Warantu Samakubo, Lieutenant Kenel Butelezi, under the lead of Brigadier Perumal. It, it, it was clear that Brigadier Perumal was saying, insofar as Docket 636 of 10 2014, we are still investigating. I remember that the two members in that meeting to the DPP, their assertion was that insofar as that docket, which, like I said, my lord, I saw the file, they were saying the investigation is concluded and, uh, you know, they, they want the decision. So, so, so that was just a confirmation that there was a really difference of opinion, even the approach to this. And you stated that as a result of the differences, uh, Warrant Officer Makubo and Colonel Butelezi then went their separate ways. Uh, where they then removed officially from the investigation of 636 of 10, 2014? My Lord, they, they went their separate ways. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say, I was the lead investigating officer, so at no stage did I say to them they should not um, form part of the team. Um, they just, it just happened, my Lord, that um, they were not coming through, there were no reports coming. Um, it was clear that there were a lot of trust issues, my Lord. Um, so, so they just went a separate way, my lord. Lord, my lord, just to add on that, this is the reason why I said in my evidence in chief, the appointment of Brigadier Perumal was then brought in. The purpose was to be the coordinator between the subs um, and the NPA, but most importantly, it was for him to come with fresh pairs of eyes to look into this docket 636 as well as the 375 because it, it was in existence at the time, and then brief the National Commissioner in terms of these differences that were apparent. I gave Brigadier Perumal this docket. That is actually the, the only time also where uh, the docket was out of my hand, where out of my hand, when he made copies of this. I do know my lord, as I've said in evidence in chief, that he didn't manage to get hold of um, the docket 375. There was resistance and he never got it. So, so my lord, just to qualify, when I say it's the only time the docket was out of my hand, I'm referring other than the times when it went to the DPP, both in Johannesburg, and, and here in Victoria. Now that an emanating from your answer as to uh, Warrant Officer Makubo, Colonel Butelezi, not reporting back to you as, as the investigating office, and the fact that they do have copies of 636 each on them, does that mean there was a parallel investigation by yourself and Makubo? and Butelezi and, uh, I mean, yourself and Ramohala and Butelezi and Makubo on this matter? I, I wouldn't say there was a parallel investigation. My Lord, this... Unfiltered, checking out. Jay, catch you on my next upload. My Lord, I mean, that's it. Yeah.
as the court pleases my lord i mean that's it yeah if the grooves don't fit quit the five accused nisi has done a fantastic job proving there was no match limit 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 limit